All right, guys, so this is a bit of a controversial video, but I do want to make it. So this video is going to be on the claim that I've seen bouncing around the vegan community for a long time, which is that our ancestors were able to get adequate levels of B12 from dirty water, from dirt, from our own shit, and also from duckweed. So I used to believe in a lot of these things and also spread it, so I understand why people have these positions. But recently, I've been shown new data to suggest otherwise. So rather than go through all the numbers with you and explain why I don't think that our ancestors did end up getting an adequate level of B12 from dirt and from dirty water and from potentially duckweed, I'm just going to be reposting a video that was posted by Ask Yourself and Dr. Avi. So Ask Yourself is a vegan YouTuber. He does a lot of moral philosophy. And then Dr. Avi is a plant-based medical doctor who's very versed in the empirics and the scientific data. He's extremely well-read and probably, in my opinion, the most well-read person in the vegan community when it comes to nutritional science and just scientific claims in general. And I'm just going to say again that, again, I did believe in these myths before I came across Avi's work, so I understand why people believe in this. And I just have to ask you guys to really be objective here with what you're about to watch and really ask yourself honestly if you think, after watching these videos, that our ancestors did get an adequate level of B12 from dirty water from dirt and from our own feces and also duckweed. All of the research cited in the video that I'm gonna be playing is also going to be in the caption of my YouTube version of this video. So if you're watching this on Instagram and you wanna see the actual data and the research supporting the claims in this video, just go to the link in my bio and you'll see my YouTube link and then just go to the actual YouTube version of the video and you'll see in the caption all the citations, all the research, all the links. And just so you guys know, me, Dr. Avi, ask yourself, and anybody else who doesn't believe that we actually got adequate levels of B12 from dirty water, dirt and duckweed, we're open to having our position challenged and changed, okay? All we really care about is the truth, and the reason I'm making this video is because, as you guys know, I am aligned with veganism because of truth and facts. Truth and facts are what I care about the most, not what perceived message or truth will be most convenient to the vegan message, okay? So if I find out that a claim that I've been believing for a while that supports veganism is actually false, I will, without hesitation, make a video on it and explain myself and, you know, show the data to support the belief. And if you have data to challenge what I'm saying, please send it my way and I'm open to viewing it, okay? I'm not an ideologue, neither is Dr. Avi, neither is Ask Yourself. All we care about is the truth. And I'm also going to be putting a link to the Discord that Ask Yourself has, where if you want, you can actually challenge Dr. Avi on this. If you have any sort of contentions with the stuff in this video, you can go to him and just ask him. And just to be clear, you should bring data and be equipped with some data if you're going to actually challenge him on the empirical claims made in this video about B12 and our ancestors. And guys, again, please, I'm just gonna say it one more time, be objective and listen to this. We need to be a very truth-based movement and based in facts, okay? The more fact-based our movement is, the stronger we're going to be, and the more rational we're going to be to people like Dr. Avi and people that are really good at empirics and data and studying and research, people that aren't vegan yet. And if those people see that we are moving that are based in facts and scientific research and we don't exaggerate claims, we don't make myths, we don't spread myths, et cetera, if they see those things, they will be much more inclined to join our movement. And those people are very crucial to making our movement strong because fact-based, well-read, scientifically literate people are very useful when it comes to getting the message out. And one last thing I wanna say before I get on with the video, as you guys have seen in my other videos, I always make the claim that it doesn't matter if eating a vegan diet is natural. So in this case as well, I'm gonna say that again, it doesn't matter if we couldn't get B12 naturally in the past. It doesn't matter if right now the only way to get B12 is through a supplement and a way that is not a natural way. These things do not matter whatsoever. What does matter is that we have the supplements, we have the means of getting B12 in a way that isn't natural, and we have a way to avoid supporting an animal holocaust, okay? So I want you guys to understand that if this claim that we got B12 from, you know, the dirt and dirty water and all that is found to be false, this doesn't take away any of the argumentative power that we have in the vegan movement for animal rights. It doesn't really matter if we can get B12 from dirt or our own shit or whatever. It doesn't matter for herbivores. None of this actually matters. What matters is that we can choose to live a life that is nutritionally adequate, that doesn't require animals. And that's really all we need to be saying from the forefront. Nothing about if it's natural or any of that, just the fact that we can do it. All right, guys, that's really all I need to say. If you have any contentions, again, just comment below, send your research, send your studies, and also go into the Discord. And if you wanna to talk to Avi himself, the person who came up with these numbers and found these numbers and did all the calculations, you can also reach out to him within the Ask Yourself Discord. Thank you so much for watching and let's get on with the video. And speaking more broadly, the notion that prior to technology, we were getting our B12 herbivorously seems extremely implausible. As far as I can tell, that's just some kind of weird, like, vegan myth that's been generated out of an ideological commitment to the notion that humans are herbivores, which ironically is not something you have to believe in order to make good arguments for veganism, but whatever. 
Now, the vegans who want to defend this idea that we were meeting our B12 RDA pre-technology from non-animal sources usually propose three means by which we would have done this. Uh, soil, water, and shit. Okay, so here are some calculations that show the problems with those proposed means of getting B12. So the B12 RDA is 2.4 micrograms. Uh, the B12 concentration in soil, this is a highball, keep in mind, is 0 0.014 micrograms per gram. So if we divide the RDA by the soil concentration, we get 171.4 grams. Remember, that's with the highball. So if you think you're eating, you know, basically a quarter pound of dirt a day, <laughs> then maybe that's possible. Uh, so with water, similar thing, uh, the concentration, this is a highball, and there's also a super highball I'm going to give after because it's its own thing. The highball is about 0.005 uh, micrograms per liter. So divide the RDA by 0.005 micrograms per liter, we get 480 liters. You think you're drinking 480 liters of water a day? That's more than a bathtub. A standard bathtub is like 300 liters. Now, there's also the shit means of getting B12. I call this the all people, no cup hypothesis because it's kind of like two girls, one cup, except it's all people and there's no cup because it was pre-technology. So the B12 concentration in shit, these are all highballs, uh, is 0 0.018 micrograms per gram. So again, just divide the RDA by that and we're gonna get 131.9 grams of shit. That's basically a quarter pound of shit. You <laughs> know what a quarter pounder burger is? Well, <laughs> you know, eat one of those of shit and you'll get your B12 RDA from shit, okay? Now, there's also a super highball with the water that has to be addressed. So the super highball for water is to focus on specific water sources that have a specific species of euglena living in them this euglena elevates the water's B12 concentration. Sometimes the concentration is as high as two micrograms per liter, which if you divide the B12 RDA of 2.4 micrograms by that two micrograms per liter, you're gonna get 1.2 liters, which is certainly drinkable. So couldn't this be a reliable way for us to have met our B12 RDA pre-technology on a vegan diet? Well there's a few problems with that. So firstly, if you look at the B12 concentration over time, you can see that it's highest when the euglena is blooming. And in fact, for the majority of the year, you would not be able to meet your B12 RDA drinking any kind of reasonable amount of this water. Now, granted, it's not over a bathtub, like with most water sources, this super cherry picked water you're only looking at, you know, 12 liters a day, 24 liters a day, <laughs> nothing that crazy. So here's what we'd have to assume to make the euglena hypothesis work. We'd have to assume that this specific species of euglena existed in Africa during our evolutionary history. We'd have to assume, and this goes for the soil and water examples from before as well, that the B12 we're measuring in the euglena water isn't composed to any meaningful degree by pseudo B12, which doesn't contribute towards our RDA and in fact impairs the absorption of normal B12, we'd have to assume that somehow we were able to isolate the specific water sources containing this specific species of euglena and harvest from them during the specific times when the B12 concentration is sufficiently elevated, then store that water and consume the requisite minimum amount throughout the rest of the year, all without the aid of technology. Now, if you think that that's plausible, I would love to hear how. I guess I should talk about duckweed for a second. It's a lot less common to hear duckweed put forward than soil or water or shit as a means by which we got our B12 RDA from vegan sources prior to technology, but it does still sometimes come up, so I'll deal with it quickly. There are two species of duckweed that have been shown to have high enough B12 concentrations that we'd be able to get our RDA from them without having to consume an absurd amount. These are Wolfia globosa and Lemna minor. Really, we don't know that the Lemna minor has this high a B12 level. It's only ever been tested in a mixed batch with a strain of Wolfia globosa, so we don't really know what's accounting for what there in terms of B12. But whatever, we're just gonna assume they both have this kind of high B12 level because that gives the other side the stronger argument. So the problem with this hypothesis is that both of these species of duckweed 
are scant in Africa, and even if we give a huge steel man and assume that all duckweeds have the same B12 concentration as these particular duckweeds, if we look at the duckweed distribution in Africa, there's no reason to believe this distribution is concentrated enough that a nomadic species could reliably find a duckweed pond to sustain their B12 RDA. And in case there's any confusion, those dots are not to scale. It's not as if there's these huge chunks of Africa that are covered in duckweed. Those are actually just points. They're blown up so you can see them. I'll also point out that these calculations came from Dr. Avi. He's a vegan MD, but he has no problem at all going after the sacred cows of veganism, right? He just cares about what's true and he's happy to shit on vegans or make them realize they're talking about eating quarter pounders of shit when they're saying something silly. So maybe you should talk to someone who does understand the health science, who takes a vegan position, and who's not got some kind of insane ideological bias, who has clearly demonstrated their willingness to criticize, you know, vegan bullshit.